Today we'll be talking about demand forecasts. Because we are dealing with time, we often refer this to time series analysis and forecasts using the mathematical whole winters method. It's more and more of paramount importance to predict the future by analyzing your current business and customer's behavior. The more accurate the forecast, the more likely you optimize your supply chain operation, cut short on inventory costs, improving customer satisfaction, and maximize productivity. There are three key main ingredients for us to forecast demand. You need to have as much historical data as possible. This is past data organized by dates and figures. Ideally, you need a certain amount of data to increase the chances of accuracy in forecasting. And in this exercise, we'll be looking at the following months. So if you should have about two to five years of past data to identify trends across the periods. Of course, if you're forecasting in minutes, hours or days, you shouldn't need to go as back as five years. The second topic is the periods to forecast are obviously important so you know which periods and type of data to account for. For instance, if you are trying to forecast periods in hours, but only have historical data in days, it won't work. Have data in months to predict months. Thirdly, events affecting data or outliers will be something to look out for when analyzing the trends and the data. At times, the business has certain one-off practices which may affect the interpretation of data, such as a summer sale or an item being removed from the market, etc. This information, if at all possible, should be provided to the business or data analysts. In Excel, we will look at this type of linear regression line, which identifies trends. We call it a trend line, which in this case has a positive trend. This is good to identify an overall trend for a particular period, but not enough for a monthly forecast. This example of linear regression line has seasonality included. This will account for particulars and cyclic patterns, which we call seasonal. This way we can be more accurate with monthly forecasts. We will also cover these two functions, which are imperative to recreate the previous two linear regression lines. In Excel, we can obtain this calculation directly in the graphic, but I will teach you how to use the function also. So let's start. Okay, so here's our data set example. I will briefly explain this so uh, you can either copy it or do it as we go along, or you can just copy it from the file shared in the, uh, in the channel. So in this column, we have the periods. So we are numbering the periods from one to all the way down to the end of the historical data and all the way down to our forecasting periods. Uh, we have the year, we have the, uh, we have the classification of the month, we have the total sales. Here, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just calculating the average price of all items sold. So this is the historical data of the demand. So we've sold 391 in July, 2020. And uh, this was our figures in sales and euros. And, and I'm basically just dividing that figure from that figure. So this is the first requirement for, for us to do some uh, demand planning or demand forecasting. So the historical data is here. It's in months. We want to forecast the following months. Uh, so the second key ingredient would be the forecasting period. So we want to forecast 12 months of 2023. So they are here waiting for us to input some data. And I also have now these the two lines that we've discussed initially. So this is the uh, first linear uh, regression line with a trend. So obviously smooth it out uh, from the beginning to the end. And that's not the one that we want. We actually want to calculate uh, uh, a linear regression line with the trend, but also with the uh, seasonality. So let's start adding the graphic. It will help us looking at the data. So let's go to recommended charts. Let's do uh, a chart line or a line chart, sorry. And there we go. Obviously, we don't have any lines yet for these two linear regression lines, but we have for the historical data. And this is how you know that, you know, we have some cyclic behaviors here. So the three peaks on your data, I mean, they don't, they don't seem cyclic. They don't seem like they repeat it itself. But when you look at the months and you, you know, this first one is, is the, uh, the period 4.6 and the uh, period six is December. 
And then if you go to this one, which is period 18, and the period 18 is December, and this one here, which is period 30, and period 30 is December. So we now know from a two and a half years of historical data that we have a, a repetitive behavior in the month of December. So this is what we call a season. In this particular period, in this particular season, for 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 every period, and now we're we're calling a period a twelve month period. For every twelve months, this behavior repeats itself, and that's a season. That's seasonality, and that's what the uh, a linear regression line with seasonality will be able to give us when we want to calculate the uh, the next the next periods. So. We don't really identify anything out of, out of the ordinary, apart from the fact that this data is has seasons or, or, or has seasonality and it has a trend. Okay, how do we apply this into the chart, which is quite simple. We go here to the plus sign and we have an option called trend line. We're going to click here and choose more options. Is now asking us... To which line you want to um, to add the uh, the trend line? Of course, the, as, as you see, we've selected the three columns, but no data on this one. We actually want to know the trend line for the historical data, so that's the item sold. So we're going to click OK, and now on this options here, we can do now two things. First, we already have the trend line, as you can see, it's all smoothed out. This is no good for us in terms of a monthly forecast. I mean, you really want to know what is the demand for the period 31 or period 32 and, and and so on and this is not what we want what we want to know is for now we want to know the intercepts and the slope for us to replicate this line and also create a seasonality line we want to click here on this option called display equation on charts now i'm going to make this slightly bigger so you can see it properly this is actually our slope and our intersect points looking at this historical data and you can just you know you could just use this data and put it here but like i said before we can also use a function to to get to these values and these functions are as you see it there it's called slope you can just type slope and you want to look at the demand, which is in the y-axis, and and that's the first uh, the first uh, argument here. So let's select the y's, and I'm just going to open the other uh, function feature here. And the x's will be your periods, so you can just get to your periods. Just please make sure that you're only selecting the historical data, you know, because you don't have any data in the future, so there's no point adding that. Also, something else very important is never forget to, you know, just to apply F4 to these uh, to these ranges of uh, of cells, because you don't want them to move. So just in case you you copy and paste this formula to to somewhere else in the worksheet or in the workbook, you know that you don't you don't you don't move the range that you're looking at. This is so by doing this and pressing F4, you are creating absolute references. So these references will not be changing if you drag down this formula elsewhere or copy paste it elsewhere so press ok and as you can see i'm going to double click just to emphasize the absolute references so if you drag elsewhere these selections will maintain as they are and as you can see the slope 11.669 is exactly the same as our equation so let's do the same for the intercept. The arguments are exactly the same. So I want to calculate the intercept point of the Ys, which is the item sold. And I'm going to be pressing F4 to create the absolute references. And for my Y and for my axis, sorry, I'm going to be selecting the periods. And F4 for my absolute references. And also I get the 811 point one three i can just make it exactly the same brilliant now how do i recreate you know imagine that you don't know how to do the trend line or or you don't actually have the graphic to look at the the the, uh, the linear regression trend line values would be the slope or in fact 
sorry, will be the intercept plus the slope, and you'll be times your period. Again, don't forget to press F4 to make this cell's absolute references. This too, I mean the others, they will shift as you drag it down, drag down the formula. And why are we multiplying with a period? Because obviously you will create this effect of, of, an, of the increasing trend. So let's copy and paste all the way down to the periods that you want to forecast. And let's paste just the formulas. As you can see, we've managed to replicate exactly the linear trend line forecast on top of the trend line that Excel provided on the chart. So we know that these values are correct. So if you want to know these values of this very basic and, sim and simple forecast, these are the values. Now, this is still not good enough. I want to know the forecast for each month of 2023. So how do we add the trend with seasonality? Now, for seasonality, and as you can see, I have something to, uh, to do here. I want to know what's the trend or what's the weight of, of, or let's say, what's the behavior of each month across all of the historical data, and for this case, it will be January. So what is the uh, behavior of January and its weight against the, the, the overall behavior of all data? So let's make this simple. Let's try and do uh, one step at a time. So let's do the average of the demand for all of January's first. So we're going to be doing an average if. So average if, open brackets, let's do the, uh, let's open the uh, formula feature. So the range is, is where I want to be looking at the, uh, the months names for me to match against the gen. So I want to be looking at this range here and again only for the historical data and f4 to make this an absolute reference the criteria is that it has to be equal to that so to gen and if it's equal to gen i want the average of this values here and again f4 for the absolute references and press ok so I think it's correct, but if you wanted to to do the maths yourself, just to make sure you you know he's doing it properly. So January appears twice in this data, here and here, and the average of this, if you want to do the average of this and this, it's exactly the same as that. So that is correct. So that average if is correct. Right, now that we have the um, the average if, now we want the actual index or the weight against the overall average. So we want to be adding the, let's divide by the overall average. So the overall average is average, average of the whole demand. And let's close parenthesis. And this is basically 83% of the overall, overall average. So the weight of January across the whole series or, or the, the, of the whole data for this historical period of data, it's 83% or 0.83. So I forgot to actually do F4 for this uh, for these ranges. So, whoops, just one second, F4 and F4, and enter. Now let's copy the formulas down here. Brilliant. As you can see, see December you know, does double the uh, the usual the average demand for, for this whole line here. And that is correct. And now for us to recreate the same line, but now with seasonality, we want to be doing the equal this figure. And now we want to multiply by the index of the month. But how do we go about finding the index for the respective month? So we're going to be using an X VLOOKUP or an X lookup or a VLOOKUP, whichever you are you are comfortable with. So this will be that times, and I'll be doing the X lookup. So X lookup that over here. 
and don't forget the uh, absolute references comma and return this f4 for absolute references there we go that is much better so let's copy and paste the formulas and all the way down here and voila we were able to basically forecast the historical data as well as provide the forecast for the following periods and now looking at the data and numbers we now have the demand now if you wanted to you know point do a reference for this cell here so you can have some sales figures as well and then copy the function all the way down here in terms of numbers and figures you would have a total of of uh, of, of, of sales figures in terms of forecast you, you would you would have your demand and you would have your graphic to show that this is exactly what you're going to be doing which is pretty much pretty much repeating the seasonality for december the uh the drops for july as well so and and is also keeping the uh the trend uh the positive trend so this is a good way and a simple way for you to apply demand forecasting in your business so i really hope you enjoyed this video and um i'll speak to you next time thank you